Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. Now, we want to get a um, good orientation on the situation in Syria and the rest of the Middle East. Let's just note so many things that you haven't been told by the corrupt uh, U.S. media. The city of Homs, uh, which uh, was considered the cradle of the rebellion, has been liberated by the Syrian army, working together with Hezbollah, the Russian Air Force, perhaps some Iranians also. City of Ramadi, uh, the big, the great conquest of uh, of uh, ISIS, Daesh, earlier this year, cut off, encircled, under siege, and might have to surrender fairly soon. And progress of the uh, Syrian Arab army towards Aleppo, uh, also in terms of seizing this key highway that goes down then to to Damascus. But let's get our expert to make sense of all of this, and that is. Thierry Maison speaking to us from Damascus. So Thierry, lots of things changing militarily, and I know you want to look at it from the point of view of Turkey, Qatar, and Russia. So please do go ahead. Yes, first, uh, um, the Turkish government is always preparing the, the third Syrian war to create a new Kurdistan, but in a Kurdistan without Kurds in the north of Syria with the help of the Peshmerga, I mean the, the army of the uh, Iraqi Kurds. And uh, uh, to do that, the, the government of uh, Turkey deployed uh, 1,000 of soldiers in Iraq to train the, the, the Peshmerga, the Iraqi Kurds, and uh, they give them a, a lot of uh, uh, tanks and a lot of weapons. Of course, uh, this uh, was discovered by the uh, by the Iraqi government, who asked to the Turkish to withdraw from their territory. And uh, um, Ahmed Davutoglu, which is now the prime minister of Turkey. Um, answer with a lot of uh, arrogance, saying that uh, they are they, they enter in, uh, in Iraq with the authorization of the government of Baghdad, and they don't want to go out because they are helping their friends from uh, the Kurdish uh, government inside in, in the district of uh, of Iraq, and. Uh, Outrageous. Baghdad decide, yes, uh, Baghdad decide to to inform the Security Council of the United Nations, and we will see what will happen now. Uh, at the same time, the, the Qatar government tried to organize a, a, a false flag operation to accuse Russia to. Uh, destroy some uh, equipment from the, the Syrian army. So that's why the Defense Ministry of uh, of Qatar buys some Russian bombs in Ukraine. It did this uh, two months ago, but he need time to transfer this uh, these weapons in uh, in Syria. They use planes from the coalition, probably. Qatari plate, but it's not sure. But some planes from the coalition, and they bomb um, uh, a Syrian army uh, building in uh, near Deir ez at the north of, of Syria. They kill uh, three Syrian soldiers, and they wounded 24. And of course, they use this. Uh, Russian bombs, so they can say it, that they are not implied. Uh, they, they said it, it was an error from the uh, Russian army and not an attack from the coalition. Unfortunately for them, uh, the, the Russian government discovered the uh, traffic between uh, Ukraine and Qatar, and they published some uh, documents um, to testify 
why this tactic. And so the, the Qatar false flag operation uh, was discovered. Right. But uh, yes, yes, sorry. No, no. Yes. That's the, the whole operation is now exposed as a fraud in the eyes yes. of the world. And very embarrassing. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, but you know, it's very embarrassing, but nobody is embarrassed, in fact, because uh, <laughs> uh, Qatar is always uh, supported by the United States. So uh, that's a very strange situation. Everybody knows that Qatar organized this uh, false flag operation, but there is no reaction at all at the United Nations right now. So, uh, but what is important now is the, that uh, the Russian army is preparing a very big operation inside Syria. They need some time to do that, but uh, first they open a second uh, military base in Syria, and they are trying to create a third one in the east of Syria, just at the border with Turkey and Iraq. And if they are able to create this third uh, military base, it will be easy for the Russians to uh, stop the, uh, the, the project of uh, Turkey, France, uh, uh, United Kingdom, Israel, and Saudi Arabia to create this new state in the north of Syria. And right now, we don't see any change in the uh, on the military level inside Syria, but this is absolutely normal because the the Russian are continuing their bombing to destroy the the main equipment from Daesh from uh, from the ISIL and uh, from other terrorist group, of course. And at the same time, the the Arab uh, Syrian army and Hezbollah are preparing an uprising of the people who are under the rule of the terrorists. So we can already anticipate that that in uh, one or two months, you will have a big change in Syria with the uprising of the the population against the terrorists, and suddenly uh, they will be ousted from the, the main part of Syria, except for the desert. Of course, they will... Uh, already use the desert for them. Hang on one second, Thierry. We've got to have a break, but I'll just get you back for a couple of minutes and uh, see if we can clarify that big news we just talked about. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. And we're on the line with Thierry Maison from Damascus, Syria. Uh, the only um, Western correspondent continuously in the Syrian capital since all this started back in um, one particular. He's been there since October, November of 2011. Now, Thierry, that is uh, big news. So there is an uprising, yes, a, a rebellion, right? A rebellion prepared by Hezbollah yes. and other forces against yes. the oppression the misrule, the the terrible conditions that have been posed, been imposed by ISIS, Daesh, but also against some of these others, the Nusra Al Qaeda, perhaps. Is that right? Yes, yes, right, right. And we, we don't know exactly how the Russian will proceed to to help for this rebellion, but uh, it's clear that the Russian are now testing new weapons uh, all over Syria. You, you remember I explained uh, in the previous uh, broadcast that uh, uh, the, the Russian militaries create a new weapon to inhibit the communication and the commands of NATO. So uh, in a, a circle 300 kilometers around Latakia, right. uh, NATO uh, is no more able to, to command its own weapons. They are no, no more able to use... Uh, uh, missiles, for, ex- for example. But uh, uh, in the last weeks, uh, Russia test uh, this weapon and something else in the 
militant side of uh, um, of Syria. Um, so for for two days, uh, Lebanon was forced to close his uh, airport in Beirut because it was no more possible for them to control the, the civilian uh, planes. And it was the same in uh, in Cyprus, in the uh, in front in the Mediterranean Sea. Right. And uh, two days ago, they closed also, um, during two days, the airport of Erbil in Iraq, exactly for the same reason. Officially, the, the Russian said we are testing new missiles in in this part of the of the ground, but uh, in fact, it's clear that uh, they are testing missiles and other weapons at the same time. And uh, it's clear that um, uh, if they test this, it's to to show to the Lebanese, to the Cyprus, and to the Iraqi government that, uh, um, that they are now uh, controlling everything with uh, uh, new weapons, and that NATO can uh, interfere with the Russian army. So now, when, you, Gary, when you say Cyprus, yes. uh, does the Cyprus also include those British Royal Air Force bases on Cyprus? Yes, yes, okay. yes. As you, as you know, there is two uh, uh, Russian... Uh, uh, the British Air Force is the basis in uh, in Cyprus, and both of them were blocked during two days. Yes. Um, so at the same time, we can see that uh, uh, Saudi Arabia tried to organize a new political opposition. They they invite they invite some uh, groups in Riyadh uh, to to create a, platform, a political platform against the Syrian government. But uh, in fact, it, this meeting was not uh, conclusive because uh, uh, there, there is always big opposition in different groups. And uh, they don't invite the Kurdish people uh, from Syria. So it's clear that uh, Saudi Arabia is not on uh, um, is is not part of the uh, French, British, and Israeli uh, plan to create this new Pakistan in the north of Syria. So, as the, the, the troops of the jihadists are divided in these two different blocks, certainly they will uh, lose more quickly. So you were saying, you've called this, I think, the pseudo turkestan right? And if I could yes, ask, you say yes. the people su supporting this are Turkey, France, Israel, and some others you mentioned? And, and the British, and the British, ah, yes. Ah. You know, it's exactly the same situation that in uh, 1956 with the Suez Canal. If you remember ah. at that time, you had the... Uh, uh, France, uh, United Kingdom, and Israel attacking the Suez Canal and uh, Egypt, and they were supported by Turkey. It's exactly the same. So I think that probably you will have the same reaction, both from Russia and from United uh, United States, and they will stop the, this colonial power. Well, that would be uh, very uh, happy for uh, for the end of the year. Let's just see. Um, it must be at the beginning of next year, not at the end. They need okay. one month or two to, to begin the operation here. Jerry, a lot of people here are interested in your report about the Saudi AWACS aircraft used to shoot down the Russian Sukhoi some weeks ago. Uh, yes. Um, for this uh, operation against uh, the, the, the Russian plane, it's now sure that... Uh, uh, the Turkish use uh, Anawax uh, from uh, Saudi Arabia because of the uh, Russian weapons, it was not possible for the Turkish Air Force to uh, to guide the, the, the missile uh, 